Welcome to another video exclusively produced for you, our Cloudonaut Plus subscribers. Are you encrypting data stored on S3 already? Not yet? Then this video explains why and how to do so. And if you're doing so already, this video helps you to avoid common pitfalls. So what can you expect from this video? So I will go through why server-side encryption is a must-have, we will discuss how to enable default encryption for your S3 buckets. But beyond that, we will talk about how to make your data protection officer happy by making sure that really all the objects in all your buckets do comply uh, with that, so our, everything is encrypted. And last but not least, we will talk about how to avoid insane costs when enabling server-side encryption for S3. Werner Vogels, a CTO of Emerson, summarizes it very well with a quote. So he says, dance like nobody is watching, encrypt like everyone is. And I think that's really true. And by the way, the image in the background, that's how the Germans dance. So that's from the Oktoberfest in Munich, about two hours from where I record this video. So that's a funny side note. Okay. Next, I want to show you how you can enable encryption, the so-called default encryption for your S3 buckets. First, let's create a new bucket with default encryption enabled. So we go to the S3 service, click the Create Bucket button. Let's give it a name, Clonout SSE. And choose a region and then at the end of um, this wizard, you will find an option to enable the default encryption. And I will go with um, the SSE S3 encryption now, so which is the default one, and just create a bucket. Let's upload an object. So upload, add a file from my downloads folder, um, click the upload button has been uploaded. So now let's look into the details of this object. So this is the YAML file that I've uploaded. And when I scroll down here a little bit, you will find here the server side encryption settings. So encryption of this object is enabled and it uses the SSE S3 encryption option. So that worked ex exactly as we expected. The default encryption is in place. Let's do the same with CloudFormation. So this template creates an S3 bucket and I want to add default encryption to it. To do so, I have to add uh, the bucket encryption property, a server-side encryption configuration, define the encryption by default, and then I pick the server-side encryption method, the algorithm. In that case, I'm using KMS. And that translates to, I'm using KMS to encrypt the objects with an AWS managed CM CMK. Let's have a look at the details about the server-side encryption for S3. So you have different options to choose. First option is called SSE S3. That is the standard way, the default way that has built into S3 for a long time. It encrypts every object with an object level key. And then it uses a master key to encrypt those object level keys. So that's the way it works. It uses 256-bit advanced encryption standard for doing so, and it's really easy to use um, right away. The other option is you can choose to use the key management service, KMS, to encrypt the data stored on S3. So that is the same as we use for encrypting data with RDS, EBS, and all the other storage services. And with KMS, uh, you have different options. First is you use the AWS managed CMK. CMK stands for the customer master key. And in this case, AWS takes care of that. So it just creates that and makes sure that this, this is available. If you have more advanced needs, you can use a customer managed CMK. Then you have full control over the lifecycle of the key, which means you can delete it or deactivate it, and then no one can decrypt or encrypt the data anymore. And you have a resource-based policy, similar to an IAM policy, uh, where you can define who really has access to this key and who can use it for decrypting or encrypting the data. 
Which option works best for you? That's an important question. And first of all, you should double check if all the features that you need to use and all the services that need to interact with S3 are compatible with the encryption option that you choose. Because that's not the case for all of those options. So for example, I'll give you an example. S3 replication, which replicates the data from one bucket to another, does not work when you use KMS with an AWS managed CMK, for example. And overall, my recommendation is when it comes to encrypting your data on S3, I would go with SSE S3 as a default because that's the simplest one to use and also the cheapest one. And only if you have a requirement to have full control over the encryption key, then I would go with SSE KMS with a customer managed CMK. And I don't think there are too many good reasons to go with AWS Managed CMK and KMS because it's very similar to SSE S3, but uh, costs a little bit more. Do you think that's it? Unfortunately, there is more to consider than that. So let's have a look into that. In the following demo, I will show you why it is important to have a bucket policy along with the default encryption configuration to make sure all the objects uploaded to your S3 bucket are encrypted. First of all, let's have a look at the default encryption for this bucket. So when you go to properties, the default encryption is enabled. It uses KMS and it uses a customer managed CMK. So that's what we want to have in here. So now I will upload an object. So adding a file, the same file than last time. But now I do go to the additional upload options and I'm overriding the default encryption settings. And I decide I want to choose, let's say SSE S3, so the default one, not KMS. And now I click the upload button. This gets uploaded. And now if you go into here, the object is encrypted, but it is uh, encrypted with SSE S3 and not with the customer managed CMK with KMS. So that means a default encryption is not enough to make sure that all the objects in a bucket comply with a certain encryption standard. That's not enough. What we need to do so is we need to have a bucket policy in place as well. This CloudFormation template created the S3 bucket as well as a KMS key, the customer managed CMK used for encryption in the bucket. Okay, now I want to add the bucket policy because with a bucket policy, I'm able to enforce that users use the encryption method that is specified in the default encryption of the bucket. So let's have a look at, into that bucket policy. So the bucket policy is attached to the bucket and it contains a deny statement. The deny statement is in effect for anyone. Uh, it's for putting objects into the bucket only, so only for writing into the bucket, uh, for all the objects in the bucket. And now here comes the interesting part, the condition. Because, um, I think this bucket policy uh, is really helpful because it allows um, customers or clients, better to say, it allows clients to upload S3 buckets without any encryption configuration. Because in that case, the default encryption of the bucket is in effect. And yeah, this works as we've seen in the, in the first demo. So it just sets the default encryption. But if someone, if a client is overriding the encryption method, um, this will be denied because we say the condition says only if uh, if a user decides to specify an encryption method, it, he or she has to specify the KMS key that we want to use, the customer managed one that we want to use. So by having that bucket policy in place now, we're really enforcing that all the objects that get uploaded to the bucket either have no encryption configuration and therefore the default encryption will take effect or they use the KMS key for encryption that we have specified in the bucket policy. Okay, so that's what we have. Let's apply that quickly. Okay, now we have the bucket policy in effect. So this is attached to the bucket. And now I'm repeating the same thing. I'm uploading an object. 
I'm adding a file. I'm specifying a specific uh, encryption method. I'm overriding the default. I'm using SSES3 here and I'm going to upload that. And what we see now, we get an upload failed error because this is an access denied error because of our bucket policy. So that's no longer possible to override the default. However, if I decide to upload the same file um, without specifying anything, so I'm just keeping the defaults, then this still works as expected. So the default encryption is in place and all the clients that do not configure um, anything before the encryption will work fine. And also, if I upload the file um, and specify the correct key, this will work uh, as well. So uploading that with the key works as well. Okay, so the bucket policy is important besides the default encryption for your bucket to make sure that all the objects in the bucket comply with a certain encryption standard. Security is the most important topic when it comes to AWS, but what's the second most important topic? You're right, it's costs. So let's talk about that. So this table compares the costs for the different server-side uh, encryption methods of S3. So uh, what is important to know is when you use SSE KMS with object keys, which was the default before December 2020, then you're paying an immense premium for reading and writing your data. So you see that in the table, it's between 750% and 60%. That's the premium you pay for reading and writing your data when you use KMS object keys to encrypt your data. SSE S3 is free and the new option for SSE KMS, the bucket keys, is also much more cost efficient. So let's have a look into that. In the following demo, you will learn how to enable bucket keys for your S3 buckets. And that's really something you should do right away. Make sure that all your S3 buckets that have encryption enable with KMS have bucket keys instead of object keys to reduce costs. This CloudFormation template again shows the S3 bucket, the bucket policy and the KMS key. But uh, what we want to do now is we want to enable the bucket key instead of object level keys. And uh, this is a simple uh, configuration, but an important one uh, cost wise. So all we need to do is we need to do bucket key enabled, set this to true inside the server-side encryption configuration. <laughs> so that's it. But this could save you a ton of money, actually. Let me summarize this video. So we talked about that encrypting your data on a 3 is a must have. You should definitely do that by enabling default encryption and also have a bucket policy in place. Second of all, uh, I think it is a good thing to start with the SSE S3, the built-in encryption. And if you have more advanced needs, then look for the KMS with customer managed CMKs. And last but not least, if you use KMS to encrypt your objects on S3, make sure you're using a bucket level key instead of an object level key to reduce costs to a sane amount uh, per month. Do you have any questions about how to encrypt data at rest on AWS? Go to community.cloudonaut.io. There's a private area for Cloudonaut Plus members only. You will find this video there. Just add your questions. I'm happy to answer them. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye.